Good morning, children. We are studying about chapter plant adaptations. Last class we studied about adaptations in aquatic plants. Now this class we are going to learn about adaptations in terrestrial plants. What are terrestrial plants? Plants that grow on land are called terrestrial plants. These plants can grow in the following areas. Deserts, mountains or hills, plains, marshy places, forests and coastal areas. First let us see about the plants that grow in deserts. Desert plants are also called as xerophytes. As you all know, desert is a place which is very hot and very dry. So these plants are adapted to grow in those conditions. Examples of desert plants are cactus, prickly pear and date palms. Now let us see the adaptations that are found in this desert plants. The stem of a cactus is thick and fleshy. As you can see, this is the stem. These are the stems. This is the stem of the cactus. It's looking very thick and it is fleshy inside. What is, what is the purpose of being thick and fleshy? It, because it stores water inside which it can use for photosynthesis. The second one are about the leaves. Can you see any leaves here? No. Instead you can see some spine like structures. So the leaves are modif modified into spines in cactus. What is the real purpose of it? It is to avoid water loss which takes place due to transpiration. Then coming to the roots of these plants, they are very long and they go very deep into the ground. The purpose is they can take the ground water and use it for the photosynthesis. These are the adaptations that are found in the plants that grow in deserts. Next, plants that grow on the mountain and the hilly areas. Usually mountains are very cold. The temperature is very cold there. So these plants grow in very cold temperatures. Examples of these plants are pine, cedar, spruce and fir. Now this is a pine tree. We have taken an example of a pine tree. Now let us see the adaptations. The trees as you look are straight, tall and cone shaped. So you can see it is very tall and the shape of the tree is cone shaped. What is the purpose of being cone shaped? It is because the snow can slide off the branches as they are falling on them. Next, and if you look at the leaves, they have a waxy coating on them and the shape of the leaves are in needle shape. The same purpose, the snow will not stay on the leaves which will lead to rotting on the leaves. So to avoid that, they are in the having the waxy coating and the needle shape. The third adaptation is Instead of having flowers, these plants have cones. As you can see here, these are the cones. So, what, uh, that, what does that cones have? What They have seeds inside them, which can be used for the reproduction. So, these three are the adaptations that are found on the plants, which grow on the mountains and the hills. Next is the plants in plains. So you know these plants are adapted to survive in both hot and cold weather. Examples are mango, banyan and teak. 
Now coming to the adaptations, they have many branches and plenty of leaves. As you can see here, this is a mango tree. This is a mango tree and you can see many branches and plenty of leaves on them. And usually these plants which grow in plains are of two types. One is deciduous trees, the other one is the evergreen trees. What is deciduous trees? Trees that shed their leaves during autumn and grow back again during the spring season. So those trees are called as deciduous trees. What are evergreen trees? Here the trees shed their leaves and also grow new leaves throughout the year. There is no particular time. So as soon as they shed, they grow new leaves. This happens throughout the year. So the tree looks evergreen throughout the year. So it is called as the evergreen trees. Now moving on to the next category that is plants that are found in marshy places. What is a marshy place? A marshy place is a place which has wet clay and sticky soil. The nature of the soil is like that. And the examples of the plants which grow there are Avicennia and Rhizophora. Now coming to the adaptations. Here the roots emerge out from the surface of the marsh. So this is the marshy place. And you can see here the, these structures. These are nothing but the roots of these plants, these trees. So why they are outside? The purpose is they help the plant to breathe. So they are also called as the breathing roots. And these trees are also called as the mangroves, mangrove trees. Next, the plants which are found in forest. Forests have usually warm climates and they receive a lot of rainfall throughout the year. And some examples are, some examples of trees which are grown there are redwood, mahogany, maple and oak etc. Now coming to the adaptations, usually you find the trees that grow in the forest area are very tall and the leaves are broad and amorant. Why they are broad? It is to capture the sunlight for photosynthesis. Do you remember the maple tree? Maple leaves have you seen? They are very broad, isn't it? So it is the purpose to capture the sunlight for the photosynthesis. Next is the plants that grow in coastal areas. Plants that grow in coastal areas are tall and straight. So the best example is coconut tree. As you can see, they should be tall and straight when they have to grow, survive in this coastal area. And they can grow in a salty water and they can grow in a place. Usually the coastal areas have heavy rainfall. So they can adapt themselves in that conditions also. Now we are coming to the end of the terrestrial plants and we are moving into a different category of a plant that is the insectivorous plants these are also terrestrial plants but they are different from the other plants how they are different these plants live in a habitat where the soil is poor in nutrients the way the soil doesn't have the right amount of nutrients for the plant to grow. And also in the places which has thick forest. So if the forests are very thick, then the sunlight cannot penetrate into the forest. So enough sunlight is not there for the plants to grow. So under these two conditions, they don't get the proper food prepared by the process of photosynthesis. So... They, what is the option they have? They feed on small insects for their nutrition. So they are called as insectivorous plants. Now let us come to the adaptations in insectivorous plants. 
These plants show unique features that help them to catch the prey. See, the prey is the insect, the small insect. Now, the first example is Venus flytrap. As you can see there, the Venus flytrap has two lobes like this. They are open here. And at the edge, you can see some hair-like structures over it. So, when the insects comes and sits over this, this two lobes close, as you can see here. Now, the insect is trapped. This is how they trap the insect and take the nutrition. Now, coming to the case of the picture plant. It is shaped like a picture. As you can see, it is shaped like a picture. The edges you can see, it secretes a slippery substance. Because of the slippery substance, the insects, when it comes in contact with this, they slip and fell into this picture. So, as soon as they fell into that, they cannot come out of the picture. So, they are trapped. So, from that insect, the plant takes the nutrition. So, these are the adaptations found in the insectivorous plants. Now, moving on to the non-green plants. So, from the name you can understand, these plants are not green in color. So, usually, the green colored pigment, that is the chlorophyll, gives the green color for the plants. So, if chlorophyll is not there, then the photosynthesis cannot take place. So, some plants which do not have chlorophyll, and so they cannot carry out photosynthesis, so these plants are called as non-green plants. As you can see, this plant is called as the Indian pipe and this is plant is called as the coral root. These two are examples for such type of plants. And what are the adaptations they have? They observe their food from the dead plants and animals. So you can see a different color. This is white in color, this is red in color. So they don't have the chlorophyll and they take from the, their nutrition from the dead plants and animals. Now moving on to the next category that is the parasitic plants. Parasite means, what is parasite? Parasite is an organism that depends upon the other organism for its food. So here the same thing happens. These plants depend on other plants partially or completely for their nutrition. For example, let us take this plant is called as the cascata. This plant, this yellow color one is called as the cascata. This green color is another plant. Now, this cascata has grown on this plant. What is the purpose? To take the nutrition from this parent plant. Now, the second example here is the mistletoe. So here you can see a tree. That's a different tree. That's a different plant. Now, this mistletoe is grown on this. So it takes all the nutrition from this plant and they grow. So this is the adaptation taken by the parasitic plants.